Hello there Year 10, I hope you're all healthy and well. Um, today our lesson is going to be on the British Raj and how it impacted India. So um, I, I'm not sure if you've got your book at home, I think school is making arrangements to get those sent to you if you don't have them. Um, but don't worry, you can do this work on a piece of paper just as well or on a computer document. So the title is how did the British Raj impact India? Let's just take a moment to remind ourselves of what that term actually means. You'll remember that the British East India Company, from the 1700s onwards, gradually took over large parts of India, and although it was a company, it basically became the government of most of India um, by the middle of the 1800s. In 1857, the Indian Rebellion happened, and when all of that was over in 1858, the British government stepped in and decided to impose direct rule on India. The British government was now in charge of India. And that remained the case for nearly 100 years, until 1947, when India gained independence and in fact was partitioned into two countries at that time, India and Pakistan. So the term the British Raj refers to the direct rule by the British government of India between 1858 and 1947. And the word Raj is a, a Hindi word, one of the languages of India, it's Hindi, and it simply means rule. So British Raj equals British rule. Um, so Queen Victoria, when it was set up, Queen Victoria was the uh, head of state of Britain. In 1877, she was awarded the title by the government of uh, Empress of India to go alongside her title of Queen of England. Um, she never actually visited India in her lifetime, um, and the government appointed someone to rule technically on her behalf, called a viceroy. The word roy is an old French word meaning king, that's where we get our word royal from. So viceroy means vice king or vice queen, and the British government appointed a series of viceroys to rule India on their behalf, and these were always members of the aristocracy, they were always men, they were always Lord this or Lord that, Lord Reading, Lord Chelmsford, Lord Minto, Lord Curzon, Lord Mountbatten. Um, it seems that the attitudes, the ideas at the time, were that only a member of the aristocracy would be the right sort of a chap to rule over India. So that's the period we're looking at. 1858 to 1947, the British Raj. Now obviously this is quite a controversial period of of history. Um, historians disagree about whether this had a positive or a negative impact on India and we're going to look at two interpretations in today's work. The first of these is uh, Shashi Tharoor. So Shashi Tharoor is uh, an Indian writer and politician. He's the MP for a town in southern India called Thiruvananthapuram and he uh, wrote this book a few years ago, Inglorious Empire, What the British Did to India. We can already gain something about his interpretation of whether the British Raj was a good or bad thing from the title alone. I think this might be the first ever history book to have come out of a viral YouTube video. Um, Shashi Tharoor was invited a few years ago to speak at the Oxford Union, uh, to take part in a debate about the British Empire. He spoke very passionately and eloquently about India and the negative impact that he perceived the British had had. The video of that went viral. I'll, I'll attach it to show my homework. You can watch it if you want. It's a great speech. And I think it was watched by almost a billion people. I think pretty much everyone in India watched it. And some publishers thought, well, let's turn it into a book. And so this is the result. Um, so we're going to look at Shashi Tharoor's point of view. We're going to contrast that with the work of a British historian, Lawrence James. He's actually from Bath, so he's local to us. Uh, his book is called Raj. The Making of British India. So the tasks I'm going to give you today, I'm going to give you a very short extract from each book, just a couple of sentences really, I want you to look at those and your first task is simply to work out what is different about the two interpretations, what are they saying, put them into your own words, are they being positive or negative about how the British Raj impacted on India. Your second task is a bit more complicated, I want you to look at the biographies of the two writers, their backgrounds, um, their jobs now. And see if you can work out the different purpose behind each interpretation. Why would they have different views? Remember that Shashi Tharoor is a politician. Lawrence James um, 
a historian. So think about what their different purposes might be. And then um, your third task is probably going to take you the longest time. I'm also going to attach to show my homework a list of facts and figures, uh, statistics about British rule in India. I want you to look carefully at that. And your third task is going to be which of the two interpretations, uh, Lawrence James or Shashi Thoreau, do you find most convincing based on all of that evidence that's available to you to have a look at? Um, what might be worth doing as an extra task after that as well, uh, and I'll put this on Show My Homework too, is using all of that evidence, create some sort of a mind map, something that will help you later on to revise the impact of British rule on India. But as an extension, and a, a last little thing for you to think about, uh, I've tried to be as neutral as possible while um, putting together that list of facts and statistics, but of course I have my own point of view about what I think British rule in India did based on my own uh, university education and so on. So, um, you know, think, even though I've tried to just give you a list of facts and statistics to work with, that in itself is an interpretation, isn't it? Because I've chosen what to include and what not to include and so on. And so if you really want something big to think about at the end, the task, think, is it ever possible for a historian to write a truly neutral history of something like the British Raj on India? Uh, or will we always be impacted by our own point of view. So that's the work for today. Um, I'll be back in touch soon with another video where we can look at, uh, we'll start to look at British rule over large parts of Africa. So good luck with the work. Um, feel free to get in touch if you need anything and I'll see you soon. Cheerio.